Okay, so where we are now with the car is we should have some correct edge loops and topology wrapping around the fender um, in the front and back of the vehicle on both sides as well as an inset on uh, the front of the fender for a headlight. So um, I'm going to begin just by creating a sphere, rotating it 90 degrees, and moving it into place like so. I'm going to scale it lower. And now I know it's in place. Um, I can just simply pull it out, or let's just see. I can just scale it from there. So what I did was I snapped it directly to the center point of the fender using V. I snapped it directly to there. And you can see that it looks something like this now. So I've got my little spherical uh, headlamp in there. The other thing I want to do is, uh, just as a quick note, we've run over this once before, but we have all this, all these things that we did to get this shape uh, to this point. And I want to make sure that something like that um, I want to make sure make sure it's not uh, pushing through the outside vehicle of the uh, mesh but again back to here I want to make sure that I clear out my inputs and all this additional information over time this can add up to be a lot of information within this file and um, it can cause lag and it's just stuff that you don't want anymore so basically what we want to do and same for this one as you can see so what we want to do is we want to clear everything out and we want to make sure that um, this is all zeroed out or also known as froze freeze transformations same thing with this same thing with this so let's go ahead and just start cleaning up this file a little bit by um, freezing transformations and uh, getting rid of this is known as history on the inputs, so we can go back and see what we did. Um, but we want to go ahead and clear all that information out. And another term used for this is just baking down that information. Um, so let's just do that. And how you do that is first, um, we can do an edit. If you just want to do a single object, delete by type history, and that will clear out all the inputs. However, You'll see I have this and this. Um, if I want to delete everything, I still have these two objects left. If I want to delete everything in the scene, uh, as far as the history goes, edit, delete, all by type history. And that will clear out any information. Um, to freeze transformations on these objects, now all we need to do is do a modify freeze transformations. We can do the same thing here if needed. Um, you see what happens is all this information zeroes out and scales remain uh, one. And I'm going to do the same thing here. You'll notice all of this additional information is all uh, not clean. And for modelers and animators, especially animators, we want all of this to be zeroed out and the scales all to be set at one. So we freeze transformations on this and this makes animating and working in a file much more easier, especially when uh, beginning to add movement. Um, some other things uh, we want to do is we want to rename our objects. So if we uh, if we need to ever you know specifically find one thing that's a difficult object to find in the scene, there's something in here called the window outliner. This is also something we need to keep clean. And uh, we're going to simply start by renaming the objects that are in our scene. Um, and one thing. Before we start 
deleting things we don't need in here. There's going to be some information in here depending on how much uh, you've done with your file. There could be a lot of invisible um, objects in here. So such as this P cube 4, if you notice, it's nothing. There's nothing to it. Um, so I can just delete that. But before we start going through all that, just so you're aware of what we're doing next, rename these objects. So this is uh, car, car body mesh. And this is, um, this would be the car L fender mesh, which is L stands for left, and this will be L head lamp mesh. Now earlier I put this onto a layer. We can also do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that right now. I'm going to start by just deleting the layer so I don't have any layers in my file. If I want to, I can go ahead and I can start putting objects on different layers and the, how I do that is by selecting my car mesh go layer create layer from selected and you'll notice it's on there and if you hit create layer from selected with nothing selected nothing will be on that layer so just make sure that you have that um, added now um, to rename it just double click I'll call this car mesh or car body layer. You can even change the color on it. So if you want, um, when you enter wireframe on shaded, you can differentiate what's on which layer simply by the color of it. Now, another thing we can do as well is um, let's just say that we have, we create a, we just create an empty layer and we want to add an object to it. We can select that object and we can right click on that and hit add selected object. Now that will be on this layer. We can make sure you rename it just like uh, Photoshop, Flash, Illustrator, Premiere, anything. Make sure you have your um, layers named. Um, After Effects. So I'm going to call this uh, L Fender Layer and save. Um, as a reminder, I'm going to uh, simply duplicate this vehicle and flip it onto the other side, this fender. Um, command D because we have it already zeroed out and my pivot points at direct zero on the uh, grid at X so I can hit command D scale negative one on the X I can select my sphere command D scale negative one on the X command D stands for duplicate what you'll notice here something went wrong because nothing seemed to have happened so reason being if that happens to you and, you're, and you don't understand why, just make sure that you set your pivot point to zero. Uh, as a reminder, the way you do that, hold D to adjust your pivot point. Okay, so now if I were to rotate this, it rotates on that point. So hold D and hold X and I prefer the front viewport for this and I can just simply drag it to the zero point and what I can do from here is command D scale negative one and you'll see now that in here I've got the start of my vehicle um, I can also you'll see that by duplicating it it remains on the same layer so you could either rename this but you could also remove selected object from layer. So now you can change that and I can create a new layer for this fender if I want. Create layer from selected 
and I'll call this R render layer and hit save and um, I can do the same for my headlamps if you want um, in this case I might as well uh, just as practice L headlight layer I always add an extension to the end of each one of my um, naming conventions so if it's a mesh I name I leave mesh at the end of it if it's a bone or joint I put joint J and T uh, if it's a layer I just put layer um, if it's uh, whatever it may be I just leave it an extension so this way when I check my outliner And what you'll want to do as well before I start getting into the outliner is you want to make sure you rename this because this will be car L Fender 1 because it's duplicated. So I'm just going to go ahead and change it to car R Fender. And we'll call this one R Headlamp Mesh. So now we've got a pretty clean file. The last thing I need to do is go through my outliner. And I'm going to delete any invisible objects. So when you see this little icon of a, a, a white cube or white piece of paper with an arrow, red arrow across it, that means it's in a it's a group. And this is not a group of anything anymore because of combining objects and things like that. So after you do that, it'll like create a new object in Maya and it'll just create a group of the previous information because it doesn't really know what to do with it anymore. So you can just go ahead and delete that kind of information. So you'll see on P-Cylinder 4 is a good example. It retained the transforms of a previous object that we've combined. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Now the only things left I have in here that are unnamed are my image planes and I can rename those as well if I'd like. And I can just go ahead and call it front image plane. And this one I know is my side image plane. This I know is my top image plane. And if I go into my panels, orthographic back one this should be oh that's my back camera and this is my back image plane P cylinder 4 delete that and I'm just going to name this back and get rid of the one so now when I see it it just says back so front side, top back side um, so yeah, that's this is the outliner. Now I want to just explain one last thing while we're at it. Uh, perspective camera obviously is your, these are by default, here's your perspective camera. And your top camera. So you'll notice it says top and if you want to select the camera on top you just select here. If I want to select this camera, you can also do it. You'll notice I click, I'll click here on the select camera, and in your outliner, the top camera will be selected. Um, and these are just default lighting, so you keep those in here. Uh, if you want, I'll show you one last thing is, that's uh, good to organize files with is um, if I highlight this entire object and I go to edit group I'll call it car PRP for group you'll notice now I have it in a group so if I select the object and press up on it it's all set as one group so um, that's just a little bit about cleaning up the file um, not too much to it 
and that's about it. All right.